Hi guys, Grandpa here again. We're gonna keep going in our poppy book. We're on chapter 15 today. And Eureka and Poppy have arrived at New House. They have found that big salt block that's up on a pole. Um, Poppy has made a discovery that there is another great big giant owl that's sitting up on the new barn at this new house. And she's she's terrified of it because she said it's twice the size of Mr. Otex. So that's where we're going to leave off. We're on chapter 15, 1, 5. And it starts alone again. Eurith moans softly. Isn't that the most luscious thing in the whole world? He asked, gazing up at that salt lick. Poppy, whose eyes were fixed on the enormous owl, could hardly speak. It's awful, she barely squeaked. Eurith turned to her. What are you saying? he demanded. Look, cried Poppy pointing as she pointed to the owl on the barn. Eurice looked and turned and looked. Ha! Huh, never noticed that there before, he grunted. In wonder, Poppy murmured, Mr. Ocax is only half that size. Eurice shrugged, then went back to gazing at that salt. Well, girl, he said, have you figured out how you're going to get that salt for me? Poppy, who was still in a state of shock, managed only to shake her head. Eurice took one last loving look at the salt and then turned. Well, you know where to find me, he said. Don't let me down, girl. And with that, he began to waddle away. Eurice, Poppy cried. Her, bro her fearful trance now broken. Well, wait! The porcupine peered around. What now? He grumbled. Well, you aren't just going to leave me here, are you? What else am I supposed to do? Well, you're supposed to help me, Poppy said in a small voice. Poppy, we made a deal. I'd get you here. You'd get me that salt. I did my part. Now you do yours. But, no but, Yuri snapped, lashing his tail in irritation. Poppy backed away. I'm going home now, but I'll be waiting. With a final glare, he said, You keep your promise, furball. And he marched off. Poppy started to run after him, but she tripped on something and fell flat. When she got up, Eurys had disappeared in the cornfield. A very unhappy Poppy dusted herself off. It was then that she noticed what it was that had tripped her. It was one of Eurys' tail quills. When he had flounced his tail at her, it must have fallen out. Poppy picked up the quill gingerly. She had never really looked at one closely before. It was mostly black, it was made out of long fused hairs, just like Eureka said. One end was blunt, blunt means it's not sharp. The other end, the sharp end, was ivory white, it was very white. With fascination, Poppy examined the tiny barb. The pointed end, which she was unable to resist touching, was frightfully sharp. She was about to toss the quill away when suddenly she had an idea. Grasping it by its blunt end, the end that's not pointy, she swished it about a few times. It moved very nicely, kind of like a sword. Poppy found a tall blade of grass, plucked it, and tied it around her waist in kind of sash-like fashion. With care, she slid that quill under this belt. It fit perfectly. Then she drew the quill out a few times 
to see if it came out freely. Though a single quill was not the full arsenal that Eurice carried, it was something. She only hoped that she'd never have to use it. Reluctantly, Poppy turned her attention back to that enormous owl up on the barn. The bird had not moved, but was still sitting on its perch, gazing off into the distance with huge eyes. Poppy was relieved it had not turned her direction. And here's Poppy with that quill. And because she's a mouse and she's so small, this quill is kind of like a big spear or a sword for her. The realization that at any moment that owl might turn and discover her made Poppy retreat into the cornfield, but not so far that she'd be unable to peer out. Once hidden in the cornfield, she tried to make sense of her situation. It was all very well to have reached a new house, but now, now that she had arrived, she still had no real clue as to why Mr. Ocat would not permit them to move here. All she had seen was this huge owl. Could that have anything to do with it? Poppy tried to think this through. An owl of this size must be furious. Perhaps Mr. Okax was worried that this big bird would steal all of his food. It certainly looked like it could eat a lot. The truth was, and Poppy forced herself to acknowledge it, this huge owl made moving here impossible. Mr. Okax was bad enough. This owl looked twice as bad. Then Poppy got a new idea. Was Mr. Okax really trying to protect her family? Had she been wrong about him all along? But then, perhaps this owl was not really living here at New House. Simply because she was seeing it now proved nothing. He could just be passing through, perhaps just spending the night. The sun was up now. Poppy decided she had best settle in and wait to see what, if anything, happened. And that's the end of chapter 15. And we're going to quit there. And here's a picture of this new big owl. All right, this book is going to get better and better. We're getting into the really good part. Good to see you. Talk to you next time. Bye.